QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Reconciliation Bank Feeds After the First Month. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have open the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest incognito or another browser to open the sample company. You can open an incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window, typing into the search engine. QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in, and the, uh, the book view or the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and then switch the view on down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in, right click in the tab up top and duplicating it. Right click in the tab up top and duplicating it back to the middle duplicated tab down to the reports on the left, opening up one of the favorites, that being the balance sheet. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview on the left hand side and then the reports back on over tab into the right. We're going to the reports on the left, this time opening up the P to the L, the profit and the loss. Let's close up the hand boogie and change that range. We're going to go from, let's do it this way. This time I'm switching it up a bit. Let's go from 08, 01, 22, tab to, let's go to uh, 11, 31, 22, tab. I'm going to 11, 30. There's only 30 days in November. I should know that my birthday's in November. I'm going to hit the drop down. We're going to say this is going to be in months and then let's run it. So now we've got our month by month breakout up through November. I don't really need November. Let's just go through October. Let's go uh, 10, 31, 2, 2. There's 31 days in October. Okay. And then let's go to the middle tab, balance sheet, same thing, closing burger, changing range and going from 08, 01, 2, 2 tab to 10, 31, 2, 2 and drop down to the months by month running it. So we got the side by side on the month by month. And we did the reconciliation last time for August. So now our ending balance for August should tie out. So the September, if we constructed our bank uh, information, our financial statements directly from the bank feeds, it should be very easy to do the September bank reconciliation. So just a recap now. So the bank statement should reconcile for the last period. So if I go back to my bank statement over here, this is for August. Now the ending balance 60,719.96 matches what we have here. Remember that will only happen if you're actually constructing your books from the bank feeds, as opposed to constructing your books and then checking them with the bank feeds and the bank reconciliation. In other words, we don't have any reconciling items. We don't have any outstanding checks or deposits. So even though that's the case, you still might have that beginning balance issue we talked about last time. And you still want to make sure that you do the reconciliation so that you know how to do it. If something gets out of whack, remember that if there is a difference, then you can go to the report. So if I go to the tab to the left, the bank uh, reconciliation reports are a little bit different than the other reports. They're located somewhere different, but you can find them in the reports. If you wanted to go to the reports to find them, and then you could go into the reconcile reports. So don't say bank rec, you just say reconciliation reports, because I guess that's because there's credit cards too. And it actually takes you to where they're housed, which is down here under the accounting tab and then in the history. And then we're in the checking account so that you can see the prior bank reconciliation 
if there was any reconciling item, reconciling items, they would be in between here. That would be the major focus of the bank wreck. So there aren't any. So it should be quite easy then going forward. So, so that means in the following month, now our beginning balance situation should be taken care of. And so when I go to the following month, my, my beginning balance on the bank statement is the same as the ending balance for the prior period. So I don't have that beginning balance issue. And if I constructed my books from the actual bank feeds, then these two should tie out automatically, making my ending balance the same. 97, 648, 12 should tie out to 97, 648, 12 here. So you might say, why am I going to reconcile at all? You don't really have to because you kind of did already by constructing your books from the bank statement. That means, of course, that your stuff ties out to the bank statement. It's not as big an internal control as if you entered the stuff on your side and then verified it to the bank account because that gives you that double check. So we don't better double check it, Colonel. <laughs> We're kind of losing that double check when constructing our books from the bank statements, but it's easier. And if we can do that in certain situations, a lot of small comp businesses would rather do that if it's faster, right? So that's the general idea. But if something gets out of whack, you're going to still have to reconcile. Meaning if you double entered something somehow, if the bank feeds entered something twice somehow, or if they didn't include something, the bank feeds got disconnected in some way, then you're going to have to fix it with the reconciliation process. So you want to know how to do that. And it's useful just to go through the reconciliation and finalize it so that uh, you get just in the habit of, of, of doing that. It should be quite easy. So how do we do that? We go to the tab to the left and go to the accounting tab on down below, reconcile. If you're in the business view, by the way, where is it located? It's under the bookkeeping. Most of the stuff seems to be into the bookkeeping and then experts area. So you can only reconcile if you're an expert. You don't really have to be an expert to reconcile. It's really easy. You can be a novice and reconcile. That's kind of deceptive the way it does that. So everybody should reconcile. It's, it's, it's something for everyone. So in any case, down here, we're picking the checking account. We're in uh, the beginning balance should match up now. We don't have that beginning balance issue. If it doesn't match up, but then your prior and you did a prior bank reconciliation, then the prior bank reconciliation was messed up. So you might want to go back and fix that bank reconciliation. The way to do that is you have to actually uh, uh, basically delete the prior bank reconciliation and fix the last one. <laughs> And so that your beginning balance rolls forward. But once you're in line, once you're in alignment, then it should be easy going forward. I can just say, all right, the ending balance is just going to be what's here. So, let's see if I can do it, type it right this time. 9764812. 9764812. Is that right? It's easier with two screens. You, you do less crazy switching numbers stuff up when you have two screens, but that's okay. I don't need two screens because my memory is like a steel trap. That, that was like one, two, three, four, five, seven numbers. That's like, a, that's like a phone number, which nobody can remember anymore. And I remembered it for like a second, but no problem. So in any case, this is at the end of September of 2022. Uh, right, all right. Start the recording of it. So once again, we've got the, the summary information. This is what we typed in. This is the cleared balance. They match automatically. And the cleared balance is consisting of the beginning balance plus what we checked off as payments, plus what we checked off as deposits, which summarizes basically the top part of the bank statement without all the detail down below. The reason it does that, and once again, it won't let me check these off. It's so, so very annoying. This has just been happening to me. So this is just a little glitchy right now. I'm sure they'll fix it, but I just would like to uh, express my annoyance. Annoyance. You're so, so everybody knows. You might want to, I don't know, any case. But if you wanted to edit the data up top, there's your edit so you can edit the beginning balance up top. And now everything is checked off automatically because it came through with the uh, bank feeds because we constructed our books from the bank feed. So it should be that easy to go in and fix it. Remember that this thing represents that they were added from the bank feeds and everything is connected up. You can sort them by payments. You can sort them by deposits. If this was not at zero, 
then what would you have to do? I would sort by deposits and then payments or payments and then deposits. And then you'd have to tick and tie everything off over here and say, okay, if it's on the bank statement, it should be on our book. So I'm always going to go from the bank statement to the books and I'm going to go through all this detail and just check it all off. Uh, and then I'll see what the difference is. If there's something on the bank statement that's not on our books, it's likely we're going to have to add it to our books because something happened. Maybe the bank feeds didn't pick it up. Maybe there was a glitch in the system and the bank feed didn't come through for whatever reason. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're checking it out. And then we'll add it. We'll fix it as we go. If there's something on our books that's not on the bank statement, then if we constructed our books from the bank statement, it's likely that we got we entered two things, right? We got two bank feeds came in for the same thing. Maybe there's a duplicate. Uh, or if we constructed our books separately from the bank, possibly writing checks, for example, or entering the transaction first because we had to we had to do our deposits through uh, through through an accrual system or something, uh, then it's possible that that it's a timing difference, meaning we were correct. It's not like we're wrong just because it wasn't on the bank statement, because in that case, we knew about it first because there are our books. We know about the transaction before the bank knew about it. We did it. That's what the reconciling item is. So when you do the reconciliation report, it will be built from this bank, reconcil bank reconciling page. This is the bank reconciling page, not the bank reconciliation. The bank reconciliation will show the difference between the statement balance and the book balance, which is not the same as the cleared balance. The cleared balance is in essence the statement balance once we've checked everything off. The, but, but in this case, it is the book balance because we construct our books from the bank. But if we had outstanding checks and deposits, it would not be that. Now remember, if there's anything but zero here, then you might say it's only off by like $5. It's only off by like $20. I don't even care, $20, whatever. But that it's not just the $20. It's not, it's not just the $20 because you're not just checking the ending balance. Okay. Okay. What you're because that $20 could be like a result of like a hundred deposits and like a thousand checks that just netted out to $20. So now you, you're, you, it's not only the ending balance is off. You can fix it by like putting the journal entry in, but like all the other stuff, from the other side of the transactions and the double entry accounting system will be all messed up. I haven't messed up yet. You know, so you, what, I don't care if it's, you know, I don't even care if it's like under a dollar, you should fit, you could, that's, you could fix it. Cause you could just go down here and check it off. Okay. So you could fix it. Okay. Before you, before you go forward. So in any case, let's fish, let's finish it up here. And then we're going to go. Okay. So now we're back in our reconciliation. If you want to look at the reports, we saw how to get there before you could go to the reports, but it's also in the history information. This is the history of the recon of the reconciliations. So we've got the last times ones here, this times one here. This is the actual bank reconciliation report. When someone asks for a bank reconciliation report, you don't show them that reconciling screen. You don't say, yeah, I did that screen and the green zero went down to zero. No, you got to give them a report reconciling it's reconciling the difference between the book the bank statement that 97 6 48 12 and what's on the books what's on the register which is the 97 6 48 12 but it's the same that's right it's, that means it's going to be a very boring reconciliation because this is basically just the bank statement again because we checked it all off these numbers should tie out to these numbers and then, and then that ties out to the same thing on our books because we don't have any difference. We don't have any difference because we built our books from the bank statement. That's why it's going to be quite easy to do, but still something we should do as the added internal control, making sure that everything is tied out, making sure that we haven't entered anything twice or missed something and making sure that if our balance gets out of balance, out of whack, books not match in the bank statement at some point in the future. We know how to fix it. You do the, you do the bank reconciliations. So that's that. In future presentations, we'll take a look and drill down on the reports a little bit more and just uh, see what we have constructed, mainly from entering the data from the bank feeds as we go. So we'll do kind of an audit thing, going from the end result, drilling back down to the source documents that were data inputted from the bank information with the use of the bank feeds.